Okay, let's look at the next function. So the last one we looked at was comparator, and now we are going to look at complement. So let's, let's start by reading the definition. Complement takes a function f and returns a function g such that if called with the same arguments, when f returns a truthy value, g returns false. And when f returns a falsy value, g returns true. So it's the opposite. So, but, or, or actually, I mean, let's look at complement. So if you go to the Wikipedia page for complement from set theory, then you can see here that complement, complement means, or, or let me put it this way, in set theory, the complement of set A refers to the elements not in A, right? So, so if you look at this picture here, right? If A is the area colored red in this image, this, this main area here, this within the circle, then the complement of A is everything else right? The, the area outside of this circle. So, so it's a sensible name, right? Because we're saying for, for everything that returns true, we will now return false and, and sort of so forth will return from the other side. Some, something along these lines. I mean, I, I assume this is a sensible name. But anyways, so, so let's actually try this out. So let's jump into Vim here and let's open up the main file that we've been working with. And let me map a keystroke to running node on uh, this file. So yeah, that works. Okay, so we've required Ramda, and then let's say, so we need two functions. No, sorry, we need one function. So we need a function f that, well, let, let's, let's actually do this. So greater than 10, let's say, right? So, so and let's use r dot, it's called gt, right? Greater than 10, let's just make sure that this works. So a uh, console log, if I console log gt 10 of uh, 10, I should get false, but if I do of uh, nine, I should get true. Yeah, so so that works, right? But and, and of course, this is the same thing as saying that. So we're just using stuff that we've we've learned before. Or actually, we haven't looked at GT. Sorry, but, but, but what what I'm doing is just that we maybe we have looked at GT. I'm getting so confused. There are too many functions. <laughs> Anyways, if if I pass in an, if if I get an n, it's like n n as I'm trying to denote that it's a number. Well, if n is greater than ten, then then greater than ten is is true. So let's just keep it that way, right? So so now you can see. So now you can see, well, actually, why did we get false, false and true before? Wait, let's go back here. So if we had GT10, we get false and then true, false and then true. Well, this isn't true. Ah, ah, sorry, G this is not the way GT works. GT says is 10 greater than, and then we pass nine, right? So I would have to do r.flip of gt in order to get that behavior that I was showing with the other function. Yeah, so, so so this just turns out very confusing. Let's not do that. Let's just say n, and then if n is greater than 10, let's say. Or actually, let's stop messing around with numbers. Let's just say const is foo, right? So if we pass an x, does this x equal the string foo, right? That's our function. So, so then we console log is foo of foo, and then let's console log is foo of bar, which of course is not foo, and then let's remove this old line. So let's save that and run it, and you can see we first get true, and then we get false, of course, because foo <laughs> is foo, and then bar is, is not foo. But what about complement? So the point is that we can define another function is not foo, and that and, and define that as the complement, so the r dot complement of is foo. Right, so okay, let, let's do it this way. So let's console log foo, so that we know that we're working with foo, and then let's console log bar, right? So I'm not doing anything with the complement yet. Uh, let's actually, sorry, like this, is foo, foo, uh, and then I change foo for bar, for bar, and then let's remove this stuff, right? So that makes more sense. So, so we're saying, okay, foo yields, and bar, yields something else, right? and so, so foo, actually I didn't need the spaces, so foo uh, yields true and bar yields false, okay? So, so that makes kind of sense, right? But then, uh, so this is for is foo, and then let's do it for is not foo, okay? Or actually, I mean, the, the function is is not foo, and here it is is foo, okay? So now we'll, we'll use is not foo here, okay? Let's run that. You can see, so in is foo, we get foo, sorry, wrong button. So in, with is foo, when we pass foo, we get true, but it, when we do is not foo and we pass foo, then we get false. 
And when we pass, when we do is foo bar, that, then we get false. Yeah, why did I write it this way? I mean, I, I could have just said, so you should have said is foo of foo yields, right? Something like that. And here I would say is foo of bar yields, right? Something like that. So here, wrap this in parens and say is not foo, right? And then let's actually put these like so and add another line between these. Yeah, so this probably is a bit more clear. Right? So, is foo of foo is true, but is not foo of foo, uh, of course, like so. Wow, why am I so sloppy today? Sorry. So like so and like so, okay. Is foo of foo is true, is not foo of foo is false. Is foo of bar is false, but is not foo of bar is true, right? So you can see we get the complement, we get the other thing, the opposite. And of course the point is that we say truthy and falsy, right? So in the documentation here, it takes a function f, uh, da, 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 when f returns truthy value, a truthy value, and or, or when g returns a falsy value. So now it's strictly true because we're saying x is foo. But maybe we would just say, hmm, let's think about this. How do we make it truthy? Hmm, actually, maybe we just say, if we could say x like this, that should be truthy, right? Hmm, but then we get that actual value, right? So that's the, ah, but, but it does actually work, right? It's just a bit counterintuitive because now we have a function is foo that is, is maybe should be renamed. I mean, it's actually now just the identity function, if you think about it. And what happened is that when we pass foo to is foo, we get foo back, right? Because it just returns itself. But when we pass is foo through complement in order to produce a new function is not foo, then suddenly uh, when we pass foo, we get false because foo is truthy, right? It, it is something. I think, I, I don't know how it handles empty string, but let's, let's try this out, right? So if we just, if we just start to look at uh, is not foo and instead of passing bar we just delete that and instead of bar we just pass nothing so yeah is not foo with empty string uh, returns true because empty string is falsy and if empty string is falsy then that means that the complement of that will have to be true so yeah it's pretty cool and of course is foo here should probably be called id because it's the identity function so let me remove, replace that in all places. And of course now it behaves the same. And if it's ID, then we should maybe replace that with r.identity, because that's the same thing. So is not foo is more like, hmm, ah, so uh, is not foo that we've defined should actually maybe more be thought of as is falsy, right? Is falsy, so probably you can see, so if I just replace that, and we'll actually just remove these, right? Let, let's do something more simple. And we say, if falsy of empty string, or if, uh, oh, hello, so we'll re add hello here. Uh, let me just add some line breaks. So let's look at that, right? So if I, if I say is falsy and I pass hello, uh, wait, 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 this didn't work is falsy wait what am i doing <laughs> i'm totally messing this up in here we should say hello and in here we should say empty string i have no idea how i messed it up sorry about that that's it's okay it's a total mistake whatever man but if we look at this right if i say is falsy and pass hello we get false but if i say is falsy and we pass empty string then we get true so we're asking whether something is falsy and that's essentially the complement of identity so, so yeah, hopefully now you're starting to see how functional programming is, is really interesting because then we've suddenly defined this notion of being falsy as the complement of the identity. So this is really like how you can build more complex things from more simple things, from more simple building blocks. But anyways, I hope that makes sense. Sorry, before we go, let's, let's actually read the type definition. So the type definition of complement, again, we use this star syntax here. So, so we say, if you have a variadic function that takes some number of arguments and produce some or, or some, some number of arguments of some types and that produce some output then when you do provide arguments to this variadic function or when you do provide arguments that that correspond to these types then you'll get a boolean back 
right? So, so essentially we're saying that if you have a function that when given some arguments produce some kind of value that could be considered or that can be considered truthy or false, falsy, right. returns some value which is truthy or falsy, which I guess is like any potential type in JavaScript, right? Because any, any type is either, or a value of any type is either truthy or falsy. So if you have that kind of function and you pass it to complement, you'll get back a new function that when given those arguments will return with a Boolean or will give you a Boolean. So yeah, that's uh, that's complement. And you can see in their example here, they're using or they're defining is not nil as the complement of is nil. So you have a function that can check whether something is null or not. Let's actually look, they say, say see also not, let's actually look at what the difference is between not, right? So, so not does not construct a function, right? Not takes a value and returns the uh, inverse. Or if it's true, it returns false. And if it's false, it returns true. Whereas complement actually constructs a new function from a given function. So so complement is like one level above in the abstraction, I guess, or something along those lines. So complement kind of works on functions, producing values, and not works on, on values. All right, that is it. On to the next one.